Welcome to Get Inspired with Jason, the podcast and YouTube show. And today we're going to be talking about how to avoid toxic and narcissistic people. As a life and wellness coach, I get so many, and I mean so many emails, voice messages on my podcast, people wondering and asking, why do I keep attracting these negative, toxic, narcissistic people? And let me tell you, that's just life. But once we know how to avoid them and learn the clues, life becomes just so much more easier, simpler, and happier, right? I mean, sometimes when we're a good person, we just sometimes attract these negative people in our lives. And I wrote down a quick list of of certain things and I created a common denominator and connected all the dots in which, oh man, let me tell you, these negative people just feed off of us positive people, all right? So for example, when you come across someone that you're dealing with that you feel is narcissistic or just toxic, ask them the following. Find out what they like to do for fun right? What kind of activities? Do they actually like to do positive activities? Do they like to hike? Do they like to do, you know, uh, uh, sporting events? Do they like to work out? Do they like to do things that you love, right? Because sometimes if they're doing things that are just not in your scope of what you consider fun and positive, that could be one sign, right? And I'm breaking down simple, and I mean simple things for you to start kind of analyzing before you start diving deeper into a friendship, relationship, whatever it is, right? Ask them, how do they eat? I know that sounds like a silly question. How do they eat? How someone treats their body and how they take care of themselves is a big sign of how they're really in real life going to treat you, right? So if they don't give two Fs about how they take care of themselves or they're just winging it, Some days they're eating good, some days horrible. I mean, already they're telling you right there, I'm not balanced, all right? Um, Ask them, do they drink a lot or do hard drugs socially? Man, I can tell you firsthand uh, in past relationships and a lot of clients that I've worked with, just life coaching them, there's good people out there, right? But just because it's, because they're good, doesn't mean they're good for you, right? Uh, or like my mom says, they're damaged goods, right? They might be good, but they're damaged. So sometimes their past or whatever they've dealt with, they're bringing it into their present life. Some people get over their past and they cure themselves and they transform just like I did in thousands of my clients. Why? Because they wanted to. Just because you were brought up in bad surroundings or a bad environment where say, you lived in not the best places and you had to do drugs and you drank or the list goes on, it doesn't matter, but you saved yourself, you've grown, you've prospered and you've moved on. But some people are stuck. So a lot of people that are still drinking heavily, right? Because as you know, drinking is a band-aid, right? You can have one, you can have two drinks, have a good time. I mean, shoot, I still drink till this day, but I don't get drunk, right? I'm not trying to cover up or mask certain feelings that I have, or I'm not just trying to get happy. I'm already happy, but I've worked on that, right? Secondly, hard drugs. I'm talking about cocaine. I'm talking about meth. I'm talking about ecstasy, whatever it is. I mean, any psychedelic drug, drug, uh, uh, the list goes on. And mind you, I don't do anything, but there's people that smoke weed, for example, for several reasons. Hey, more power to you if that makes you feel good. But if they're doing hardcore drugs, even if it's socially, that's already a red major flag of saying, well, what kind of substance of life do they have? What are they gonna bring to me? Because sometimes they're gonna be, actually, unfortunately, not sometimes, but most of the time, they're gonna be thinking and acting irrationally, which causes them to be toxic, which causes them to bring narcissistic things into the actual relationship that you have with them because they're not really acting on who they really are. They're acting and cover up on these type of drugs. So just think about that for a second. What else do I have on my list? Do they claim to be positive, but in reality, they don't really stick to what they preach. 
You know, have you heard people, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to the gym or I'm praying or I'm God knows meditating and I'm doing so good and I'm such a skippity dude, a happy person. But in reality, they may be saying it, but they're really not practicing it. So I want you to really start really grasping these things and, and kind of reading the clues, reading the fine print as to, wait a minute, are they really positive or they're just claiming to be? I'm a firm believer actions speak louder than words. So you really have to take note of that. Um, the next one is, oh, this was a great one. Do they start and create arguments out of small, petty things? Like you could be having a great conversation, having a great day, you're hanging out. And maybe because they're so irrational, they're causing an issue when the issue doesn't even ex exist off of the smallest thing. You're saying, wait a minute, honey, what's going on? Or how about having a boss that, you know, everything is great a few days a week and then some days, boom, they snap. And you're saying, wait a minute, why am I having to do that? Like I've said in past episodes and I'll tell you again now and in future, just because someone is having a bad day, remember that's a reflection on them and how they treat you, not on you. So you can't be living on someone, somebody else's expense on how they treat you. Mind you, if you're instigating negativity, you're gonna get a negative response, point blank, period. But if they're just being nasty with you, if they're treating you in such a way where you feel belittled and that negative energy, which is causing them to be toxic, be narcissistic, you gotta cut that string in and out, like immediately. Um, let's see though, this one's another good one. Do they say that they're happy, like I said before, but always criticizing you or most of the time criticizing you for just the smallest things? This kind of goes into the one I just spoke on pro uh, previously, but man, let me tell you, if someone is always nitpicking, nitpicking, like jabbing, and always trying to find something that's wrong with you or what you did or said, that's just a bad sign. You need to do something about it. And lastly, are things not ever good enough, right? You ever met someone that no matter what you do, right? You go out of your way for your friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, your boss, your business partner, and they're just never effing happy or they find, they just find more issues than solutions, right? These are certain things that you really need to evaluate when you're coming across or have someone in your life already that is like that. And you may be saying, well, J Jason, I'm already married to this person. What do I do? Or I'm already in a partnership. You need to reevaluate everything and you need to sit down and make sure that A, they are conscious of their activities by talking to them and talking to them in a very calm manner, but being straightforward, you can't tiptoe around it. You got to be straightforward and say, look, these are the issues, whether you realize it or not, how are we going to fix them? Well, they want to have to fix themselves first. If someone does not want to fix themselves, I hate to say it, but the issue will always be present. So communicate and express yourself in the best way possible to them and see if they want to change and see if they want to work. Because look, even in bad past relationships I've been on, I was always realizing, I was always learning and growing how to better myself, how to be a better partner. Right. But my partner or partners in the past, they didn't want that. So you got to ask that you could say, well, 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 no, but they said they did. Okay. Did their actions really speak that right? A lot of times people want to change and they say it verbally, but they're not doing anything about it. Actions speak louder than words. That is really what it boils down to. It takes two to tango, you know, and, and if you're, and if you're saying I feel stuck, and I don't know what to do, we can dive deeper and we will dive deeper. And this is why I work, not just doing keynotes speaking across the country or on television, but I do one-on-one -on -one life wellness relationship coaching to get to the root of these issues because I can give you all the free tips that I want, but at the end of the day, it takes work and it takes an investment within you to want to either grow with your partner or outgrow your partner, 
right? So those are a lot of things that you need to start thinking about and start communicating. And how can we do this? No amount of therapy, no amount of coaching is going to do any good to anybody that is not wanting to change, right? Whether it's with your physique, your eating habits, the list goes on. I always tell people, look, it's like having a relationship with your food. If you're not having a good relationship with your food, it's going to show in your skin and diseases that develop as time goes on. So you got to get to the root of it and say, A, we're changing this. B, how are we going to do it? And C, let's follow the plan and stick to it. Are you with me? Do me a favor. These are questions that I've brought up uh, because a lot of you have been writing in and sending in. Whatever specific questions you may have, send them in, write some comments, make sure you share this episode for anyone that's dealing with narcissistic, negative, toxic people. I hope this did some clarity or a lot of clarity to you. And most importantly, get inspired. I can't wait to hear your comments. Please leave me a review on iTunes and all Spotify, as well as Google platforms. And of course, on YouTube, I'm wishing you a phenomenal Caliente Day. Remember, it's mine right, body tight. I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer. And don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.